All right, welcome to the interchangeable course. Uh, this is going to be one of four. So we're gonna be showing the four different most popular types of interchangeables out there on the market. This particular course, we'll talk about how to install a turbo switch grip mechanism. Okay, so let's dive right in. We got our ball set up on our, on our jig over here. And for all four exercises, we're going to assume a quarter inch reverse on the thumb. Okay, so uh, the best way to do any type of interchangeable is to always pitch the hole itself in the direction th uh, that we got from our measurement. Okay, this way that the inner and outer mechanisms all face in the same direction and are parallel to one another. This gives us the best chance to not hit the locking mechanism. Okay, so uh, we're going to go through uh, all four, but like I said, this installation uses the turbo switch grip kit. So in order to install the switch grip, you're going to need some basic tools to get started. Okay, one of the best things that you could do if you don't have any of this equipment, uh, first step is you need a milling machine because you're going to be able to, you're going to need to use uh, larger drill bits to do that. Okay, so uh, if you buy the turbo starter pack, it comes with a drill bit, 30 outers, 10 inners, and a whole slew of accessories. Okay, so that is a really good starting pack uh, for you to get everything that you need. However, all of this can also be sold separately. So like I said, the drill bit, very important because it has a stopper. So every ball is at the same depth. So that's good. Okay, then we have the outer sleeves. Okay, this is the female part that will live in your bowling ball. Okay, here I've got an orange one. They come in a multitude of different colors, black, blue, yellow, red so just check with your local distributor to get the colors that match okay locking mechanism here at the top um, and basically on the male piece which is called the inner sleeve we then see the locking pins that will go into the female piece okay so here we do a quarter inch turn and it is locked in okay here on the inner sleeves we have three different variations what i'm holding in my hand here is a blue one uh, again that's available in multiple different colors and this one is loaded from the factory so it's got a black slug in it and this is the one and a quarter variant there is also the one and three eighths variant okay where it's basically half of this piece will just be the slug so for larger thumbs that is going to be the case uh, if you do not want to use urethane your best option then is to use a blank okay so basically here you could put anything either a vinyl insert or also a molded custom thumb if that is something that you wanted to put inside a blank inner that is another option okay so again we have multiple parts basically the inner and outer sleeve are what will compose the uh, switch grip mechanism still in regards to switch grip we have a couple of uh, additional items that we could be using on our drill press that aren't a must but are very nice to have okay so if you have the budget allocated to this it is definitely something that i recommend uh, first off is a reamer okay so the switch grip reamer is a lifesaver okay so what happens is we are drilling a large hole into the ball there is a possibility that the ball will shake a little bit and basically when we're going to be installing our outer sleeve it has to go in very easily okay so this reamer bit makes sure that the hole is perfectly cylindrical and makes the outer sleeve basically just slide in super easy making it so that it's not hard to lock in okay so if you're having trouble with that this is a lifesaver okay however not very budget friendly but again if you're drilling a lot of switch grip this is a huge time saver next up another thing that you could use is the turbo plug cutter okay this is great because if you know there's not only switch grip for thumbs but there's also switch grip for fingers okay so if you want to do switch grip for fingers more specifically this is not the same width as your regular plug cutter so if you wanted to cut one finger at a time which is recommended doing switch grip fingers you need a smaller plug cutter. This is great because it's, it's a little bit smaller, won't touch the ball anywhere else. So this is great for switch grip. It really fits the size of the outer sleeve a little bit nicer. So as we see, it's not as wide, okay? So less chances of nicking the outside of the ball. So this is a great, great little addition to that. When we were talking about the reamer, if this is out of your budget and it's respectable, okay? Turbo has come out with an additional product that can help you with your existing setup. So they sell these one and three quarter inch sanding discs, which are great because inside, not only is the sanding disc much wider than your traditional sanding disc, but it also comes with a plastic washer. So basically when you put this on, 
it, it now hugs this washer and really goes around the contour of that one and a half inch hole. So it basically turns your high speed sander into uh, a low budget reamer. Okay, so if, if that's something that you're looking forward to, please check with your local distributor to get these one and three quarter inch turbo sanding discs. They are a great alternative to the reamer. Okay, however, I still recommend the reamer. So now that this is all said and done, let's uh, jump right in and let's go through the whole uh, process of doing switch grip. Everything that we're gonna be doing here is going to be a quarter inch reverse. So I'm gonna put myself here at a quarter inch reverse, okay? And I'm gonna lock this in so it's basically the same everywhere. Here we're on our Ovalmatic, okay? Uh, no matter what machine you have, this is going to be the same regardless. All right, so we're gonna start uh, drilling our switch grip right now. So every demonstration that we're gonna be doing here is going to be a quarter reverse. So I'm just going to make sure that my machine here is at a quarter reverse. So again, reverse points, the arrow on the spec sheet points down. So we want the table to be pushed up. Okay, so I'm gonna go here to 250. Okay, and all of these examples, I'm just gonna do a round hole at 15 16 So here I've got my 15 16 drill bit. I will bring this down close to the ball and I will now uh, pivot it so I am at my cut line. So here I basically mimicked a cut line. So if I had a four inch span, this would be two inches from my uh, grip center, okay? So what we're gonna wanna do is really center that drill bit on that cut line. Okay, okay so this is locked in, good to go. So what we can do here, turn on our drill press, make sure everything's good. Okay, so here I missed a little bit. There we go. Okay. Okay, and we make sure that we hit our cut line. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Okay. So now that we know that we're gonna hit our cut line, that's basically where the center of my hole is going to go. So since my center of my hole is gonna go here, I know that if I just take my switch grip bit and go right on top of this, that the whole set mechanism is going to be centered on this cut line. Uh, this is my one and a half inch drill bit, okay? I am not gonna start with this, okay? I prefer to keep this nice and sharp, okay? And not really like use this very, very deep. So it is a very big hole. So what I suggest you do is you take something out of your drill bit rack that doesn't really serve a lot of purpose. So here I'll take a one and five sixty fourths or a one and seven sixty fourths. So just something that really doesn't have much use. So I'll take this one here, one seven sixty fourths. Looks pretty fresh. Okay. So again, it's very rare that you'll drill, drill a one and seven sixty fourths or one and three thirty seconds. So just take something out of your drill bit rack that doesn't really get used quite a bit. Okay. And we're going to start our pilot hole with this. So basically, this drill bit is the one that's doing all the work. So we see since this drill bit's pretty, pretty new or unused, it's going in nice and easy, okay? Okay, so about two and three quarters there. I'm gonna stop that. Okay, so now that most of the grunt work is done by the drill bit, I can now switch this drill bit out and now go to my turbo one and a half inch drill bit, okay? And now I'm gonna go all the way up to the stopper. So I know this is a little bit of a longer process because we're drilling two holes now, but you'll thank me later when, you're, when your switch grip bit will just last a little bit longer and you don't always con constantly have to send it in for sharpening. Okay, so as we see on this uh, polyester ball, it's cutting in like butter. Okay, so what you could do here is kind of just crouch down and kind of see where that stopper is going to touch the ball, okay? Okay, so in this case, we touch the ball a little bit, which is okay. That'll buff right out, okay? And we'll be good to go there, okay? Next up, okay, this is an optional step, but if you have it, do it, okay? Is our reamer, okay? So now, again, the machine hasn't moved, everything's good, okay? We're now gonna use our reamer bit to make sure that the hole is 100% uh, round. So here, be careful, it's gonna make some noise, okay? So, caution. Okay, and now we have a perfectly cylindrical hole. It basically knocked off all of the, uh, maybe some trouble spots that we might have had there, making everything nice and round on the inside. 
Okay, so this is done. We are now ready for an outer sleeve. Okay, so we have an outer sleeve ready here that we're gonna put into this ball. Okay, as you see, this is pretty neat because it matches the color, really nice, okay? And what you're looking for, okay, and obviously we used a reamer on this step, but what you're looking for is for this outer sleeve to just fall into the hole like this, okay? You see that? It's going in and out very easily, okay? This is a proper installation of switch grip, okay? It should not go in tight. You shouldn't be able to knock this in with a hammer. This has to just drop in like that, okay? So if you're using your sanding discs or the reamer or just whatever, just make sure that this goes in like that, okay? If that does that, then you installed it properly. Next up, just take your, your regular sanding disc from whatever you've got and just rough this up on the outside just to give the glue something to adhere to. So that's good to go, okay? And again, this will now just drop in very easily. We will then take our slow glue and we will drop a bead of glue all the way around. Okay, so we just grabbed our hammer. We're gonna take this in now, okay? And again, like I said, this just, this just go in, but we're gonna knock it in. Okay, and one thing you wanna make sure for here is on the back of the, uh, uh, the outer sleeve, we have a little bit of a notch, okay? And we wanna line that up with our center line, okay? So that's how we know that we are perfectly centered. So we see here the notch, it's lined up with my center line. This is good to go, okay? One thing that you wanna make sure is that every ball that you drill, you want to make sure that this is lined up in the same direction, okay? I've seen pro shops put it in the front. I've seen pro shops put it at 45 degrees just to mess up other local pro shops. But basically, the basic installation is the notch on the outer sleeve to match up with the center line, okay? So now what we're going to do is we are going to move our machine back to zero, zero to cut this down. So I'm going to take my plug cutter. And I will now cut this down. I'll finish off with a bigger one just to cut it down. Okay. So outer sleeve is now in. Okay, just take a bevel knife to the top here. Knock off any excess that we might have. Now you might be saying to yourself, why aren't you taking this off the drill press? Again, efficiency is key, okay? The more you take this off the drill press, the more you're gonna have to realign everything all the time. Okay, so we were at a quarter reverse. Now we just go back to a quarter reverse, right? So now that I'm a quarter reverse, if I take a one and three eighths drill bit, which is the size of this, I should now be perfectly centered in my hole, okay? So again, the beauty of working with the tools that you have to make sure you don't waste time behind the drill press. Okay, so the more efficient you can get, the better you'll get. Okay, now we're gonna take the inner sleeve, okay? So in this case here, we've got a blue inner, okay? One thing to note is that you're gonna have a side with one clip that's wider than the other, okay? If you installed with the notch in the back, the D here, which is the fatter tab, is going to be in the front, okay? So what I'll do is I'll pop this in, okay? And you see that goes right in, okay? So what we could use here is we could use the switch grip locking pad to come in here and twist it, okay? Give ourselves a good grip, okay? That's good. Another good tool that you could use is just a simple uh, vice grip or just a very good, uh, like a wide uh, plier here. So as you can see, very easy. But like I said, with the gripping pad from Turbo, that does a good job, okay? So now that this is in, okay, I can go back to my starting bit, okay? So in this case here, we're doing a round hole at uh, 15 sixteenths. So I'm just gonna pop this in, and where is it? It's right in the middle of the hole, okay? So now I could just make sure that I drill my hole. So if you were drilling an oval using Spectre, you would just move your table to wherever it goes, and it becomes the exact same process as when we were talking about how to drill an oval. Okay, so one thing you want to make sure here, um, and this is one of the cons of switch grip, is that you need to make sure that you don't touch the locking mechanism at the bottom with your drill bit, okay? So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be going very slowly as we get towards the end, and we're going to wait for it to thump, okay? And that's when it's going to go through, okay? 
And what you wanna make sure is that check where it is here on your drill bit depth gauge so you can see where it is. So if ever you're drilling an oval, you know at what depth you need to stop. Because as soon as you hit that locking mechanism with your drill press, you are now compromising the security of, this, of the locking mechanism and there is a possibility that the tabs will break, okay? So if ever somebody has trouble with switch grip and doesn't trust it, it is most probably a, a bad installation. So here, I'm pretty much out of it, okay? I have no more restrictions. I felt it drop and now I'm basically floating in air here, okay? So I can now take this out. I know that it's right around here and I could now do my oval if need be, okay? So now that this hole is done, as I said, we're just gonna do a round hole for this demonstration. All I need to do now is go back to zero pitch and cut everything, okay? So I'm not gonna bring my machine back to zero. Okay. Put this on. Now basically it doesn't matter, so I could now move this to be completely centered, which is fine. And I'll now just cut this down. Uh, but other than that, everything, all the other processes are exactly the same, okay? So right now we just wanna make sure that that is 100% uh, flush with the ball. This looks really good, okay? Probably hit it a little bit more. All right, and there we have it. Switch grip, completely centered. Just take a bevel knife here just to round off all the excess here. A Little bit of ball cleaner here, just knock off what we touched there on the ball and we will be good to go. So now I should be easily able just to take this, twist this out, and we are good to go, okay? So one last thing that I'll do here is I'll just take my bevel knife yet again. So what I'll do here is I'll just take my bevel knife, we got a little bit of a lip here, and I'm just gonna run all the way around it, okay? Just to kind of knock that off, okay? Another thing you could use is just use your, stand, your sanding disc that we were using earlier, okay? And just kind of go, go around it like this, make sure it's nice and flush, okay? And then, like I said, in here, we're not gonna need to use any sanding because it should be going in very easy, okay? And again, same thing here. I could just run on the outside just in case I got like some burrs or something that, that are left over from that, okay? That should just pop right in, okay? So make sure you run your finger all the way around. Make sure that there's nothing kind of like sticking out a little bit. That's why it wasn't going in nice and free. So just bevel that out a little bit. Don't need to go inside here with bevel because the nice shiny contour on the inside plus on the outside, it's gonna make this just pop right in, okay? And then from here it goes in, turn counterclockwise and you hear the lock go right in, okay? So very quick and easy and a very significant lock uh, going in. So again, just need to clean this up. I had a little bit of uh, residue on my plug cutter. That's why this stayed on there. But other than that, really good uh, job here for the turbo switch grip. All right, so when working with interchangeables, there is a little bit of an issue in the industry where basically every pro shop might not have the same depth of their stopper on their uh, interchangeable drill bit. So because of that, there's a little bit of like a, I'm gonna call it a pro shop hack that you could use if somebody brings you a ball from outside. So if we take, you know, Sean that we had out on the lanes, he's from the Western part of Canada. We're on the East Coast here. So I'm probably not gonna drill most of his stuff, right? Understood? But if he's coming here for a tournament or whatever, and he brings me an inner sleeve, okay? I'm not 100% sure about the depth, okay? So um, over the years, we've tried to find ways to basically try to find the proper depth, okay? Um, and one of the easiest ways is basically trial and error. So use your drill bit, drill the hole. And what we do here is we take an outer sleeve, okay? And we just cut it so it's just the locking mechanism that's left, okay? And then, so what we would do is we would take our inner, and this could work for any other interchangeable system, okay? Um, um, excuse me. So that would work for any interchangeable system such as uh, Jopo or uh, Turbo. Uh, obviously for Ultimate, you have that top hat that'll bottom it out, so you shouldn't really have that issue with the Ultimate. Um, with Vice, that's a little bit more complicated as well, but uh, basically you could just put 
the, the base, uh, the bollet onto the slug and drop it into the ball without gluing anything so you can get the right height that way. So this little hack basically mimics that. So again, half of an, uh, an outer sleeve that we just cut down, so we just have the locking mechanism. Take the bowler's inner, put it in, and then drop this completely into the hole and see if it hits the, the, the proper height. If that's good, then basically drop in a regular inner outer sleeve, excuse me, then if that's good, then just drop in a regular outer sleeve, sand it up, pop it in, glue it, and you're good to go, right? So once that's done, you could also note uh, the depth, put it in your notes inspector, and then the next time it goes around, okay? It's happened to me a million times. That's how we came up with this idea. So again, that's just a little, little hack for you if you wanted to, if you have that issue with some of your clients. Let's go through some switch grip troubleshooting. So one of the biggest problems that people might have is in regards to basically the inner sleeve not falling in freely like this, okay? The biggest problem with that is because the outer sleeve is in too tight around the ball, okay? So as I had said, when you're, pop, when you're putting in your outer sleeves, they have to drop in, okay? So when you're at that one and a half inch hole, you really, the first thing you have to do is take that outer, just drop it in and you have to feel it like, like as if you can let it go and it, boop, it just pops into the hole, okay? So as I said, reamer's a lifesaver for that and then your one and three quarter uh, sanding discs are a really good tool for that as well, okay? If that's the case, okay, and this is still too tight, okay, and you, it's too late, it's already installed, so basically what happens is everybody thinks that it's at the bottom that it's getting too tight. Okay, so this actually, if you take a caliper to it, the inner sleeve is actually tapered a little bit. So the bottom is a little bit slimmer than the top. Okay, and same thing here with this hole on the, uh, the outer sleeve. Okay, so what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna sand the top a little bit more. Okay, it's not the base, it's not the lock, it's the top. Okay, so if you get here and it kind of gets stuck here, it's because this opening here at the top is too tight. So what you want to do is basically just take your sander, sand out just the top a little bit, and that's going to let this drop right in. Okay, so those are the two main causes there. In regards to the locking mechanism, as I said, when we're drilling through it, you don't want to touch these, these pins here on the side. So very important to note the depth when you're drilling through it, okay? So that's gonna be the biggest, biggest cause for these tabs to be snapping off, okay? Uh, this is already the fourth generation, that's why it says D of switch grip, and these things are rock solid, okay? Um, so definitely, those would be like the three worst case uh, scenarios that you might see in terms of troubleshooting for switch grip. So uh, I hope this tutorial helped you understand how to install switch grip. If you wanna learn how to do ovals inside a switch grip, basically just go watch the tutorial on how to do custom uh, oval thumbs. And just once you get this inner sleeve in and locked in, okay, it becomes that same principle, okay? So make sure to just use that same flow once we're in that spot. So again, uh, this was the turbo switch grip tutorial using an outer sleeve, inner sleeve one and a quarter with the uh, drill bit and also the reamer. So I hope this all made sense to you. And if not, please just rewind, go back to a spot maybe where you didn't really understand. Uh, and again, this is just really good for your types of bowlers that might be able to drill, let's say two to three balls a year, makes your life a little bit easier with that. Okay, also another thing in Spectre is that we have the outer to cut measurement. So if ever this was a fully drilled bowling ball, I would measure from the installation of the outer sleeve. So this edge up to the edge of the insert holes that I'll be making the outer diameter. So either 31, 30 seconds or whatever. So I would log that into Spectre. So this is something that if we were drilling the full ball, I would then at the end of everything, take this measurement using a span gauge and log that in the system. All right, so again, have fun installing switch grip. I hope this helps. We'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you.